In this video, we will see how to implement the user registration functionality in our Angular application. If you want to check out the written version of this tutorial, you can click on the first link in the description section where you can also find the source code for the complete application. So in the part 10th of this video tutorial series, we have already created our Angular application, created the header section, which contains the buttons for login and sign up. So in this video, we are going to implement the signup functionality and for that, let's go ahead and implement the signup functionality. For that, I'm going to open the terminal and type ngc auth slash signup. This will create our signup component in a TypeScript, HTML and CSS file inside the auth signup uh, folder. Now I'm going to open the written tutorial and copying the signup component HTML file code from there and paste it inside our project. After that, let's also copy the CSS file to the signup component.css. Now before checking out how this looks inside the browser, you have to add a route from the signup button on the header section to the signup page. If you check the signup anchor tag inside the hydra component.html file, it's pointing to the path signup. Let's add this path to the app routing module.ts file where we declare all the routes which are there in our Angular application. And here I'm going to update the routes array with the route information for signup component. Now let's go to the browser and check if we are able to navigate to the signup page after clicking on the signup button on the header section. So perfect, it works. Now let's handle the form input inside our signup page using reactive forms. As a first step, let's import the reactive forms module inside our app module.ts file. I'm going to add reactive forms module just below the app routing module and also make sure that to add the import statement for reactive forms module from Angular forms. After that, let's declare a variable called as signup form, which is of type form group inside our signup component.ts file and inside the ng on init. I'm going to type this dot signup form equals new form group. And inside the form group, I'm going to declare the form controls for the fields we have inside our signup form. The first one is the username field. So here I'm going to type new form control and pass the form state as empty for now. And the same thing also applies for the other fields, email and password. We can also add validations for this field. Let's update our form control by adding validators.required for each field. And especially for the email field inside the signup form, we will also add validators.email to check the input value for email field is in the valid format or not. All right, so we have made lots of changes inside our signup component.ts file. We have to sync these changes also to our HTML file. So now let's open signup component.html and first let's declare the form group directive for the top form tag and pass the variable signup form. Next, we have to assign the form control names to the input fields. Inside the input tag of the email field, I will type form control name in square brackets and provide the value email with single quotes. If we do not provide single quotes, Angular will check for a class level variable with name email but we declared this field as a form control. So by, so by adding the single quote, Angular understands it as a form control value. I'm going to add the form control names also for the username and password input fields. And lastly, let's add also the code where we display the validation errors for each field. So just below the input tag, I'm going to add a span tag and inside the span tag, I'm going to add an ng if directive and type signup form dot get email with a single quote dot valid and signup form dot get email again with single quote dot touched. And let's add text. Please provide valid email. So what's happening here is we have added the validators inside the form controls for each field. So if the given form control is invalid, Sign up form dot get email dot valid will return either true or false. So if the given field is changed by the user and the value provided by the user is not valid, we will display this uh, message. Let's copy this and also adapt it for the username and password fields. Now 
Now let's check how this looks inside our browser. I'm going to select the input field inside the email and, and click somewhere else. So you can see that we received the message, please provide valid email address. The same thing should also apply for username and password fields. Perfect. Okay, now if there is an error, let's show the input with the red border. For that, I'm going to open styles.css file and type and type input.ng invalid dot ng touched and then I'm going to provide the border as one pixel solid with a red color okay now let's save okay let's save this and go back to the browser and if I try to change the input field and click somewhere else on the page you can see the error message along with the red border on the input field okay now it's time to take the input from the form and make a HTTP call to our backend API before that let's check the swagger documentation we prepared so I'm going to open the URL HTTP localhost 8080 swagger UI dot HTML and under the auth controller, expand the endpoint for sign up. And here you can see the payload, which is accepting. That is, we need a username, email and password. So we already have those fields inside our form. So let us create a model in our Angular application to encapsulate these fields. I'm going to open I'm going to go inside the signup folder and create a file called as signuprequest.payload.ts and inside this field I'm going to create a signup request payload model interface with fields username, email and password. Okay now let's declare this model inside our component. I'm going to give the variable name as signup request payload and I'm going to initialize this model inside the constructor. Here I'm going to provide an empty string value for each field. All right, now we forgot to add the ng submit directive to our form, which handles the on submit action. So let's quickly add it and uh, this ng submit directive should call a method called as sign up. Let's also create this method inside our component. And inside the sign up method, I'm going to read the values from our form group one after another and assign them to the fields inside the signup request payload. I'm going to access each field by using the get method on the signup form and accessing the value property, which returns the value of the form control. Now we have our request payload object ready. Next step is to make the HTTP call to our backend. We will make that call in a separate class called as an auth service. So let's create this service. I'm going to open the terminal again and we'll type ngGS auth shared. This is going to create an auth service.ts file inside the auth shared folder. Perfect. So let's open this auth service class and declare a method called as sign up. And inside this method, we have to make the HTTP call. For that, we need access to the HTTP client class inside Angular. Let's inject this class into our service through the constructor. And after that, let's come back to the signup method and type this dot HTTP dot post. And here I'm going to paste the URL for the signup API. And we'll be receiving the signup request payload as the input for this method. So let's pass this object as the request payload. And lastly, let's add a written statement for this method and declare the written type as observable of any. Also, as the response from the backend call for the signup call is a string, we are going to change the written type as a text. So now before accessing the HTTP client inside our auth service, we have to declare the HTTP client module inside the app module.ts file. So let's open the file and declare the HTTP client module. Now let's inject this auth service class into the signup component.ts file. And inside the signup method, I'm going to type this dot auth service dot signup and I'm going to pass in the signup request payload as the input. As this method returns an observable, I'm going to subscribe to this return type and add some console log and log the response. So now let's open the browser and check if we are now let's open the browser and check if you are receiving a success response or not. So here what we are receiving is an error response which says the request is blocked by course policy and our pre-flight request doesn't pass the access control. This, uh, we are receiving this error because our backend is blocking the request because we did not specify any course policies 
yet so let's configure them by the way if you are not sure what is course i'm not going to go into the details about that i have already created a separate video in my previous builder blog with spring boot and angular series i will add a link to the description you can check that video and come back so please check the video for more information so now let's go back and open our IntelliJ IDE and uh, here I'm going to create a class called as web config inside the config folder and I'm going to add the configuration and enable web MEC annotations here on top of the class and I'm going to implement a web MVC configurer interface for this class and I'm going to overwrite the add course mappings method and uh, this method contains all the course related configurations which we required for our the backend and here we are actually accepting the request from all from all origins to our backend if you are developing a production grade application you may want to not do this and read more about what uh, are the right way to do but for now this configuration should resolve the problem we have with our registration so let's restart the backend application and try to register one more time so now you can see that we are receiving a success response from our backend. So that is the end of the video guys. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and share the video and also subscribe to the channel for more interesting tutorials like this. I will see you in the next video and until then happy coding and stay safe techies.